Yo, welcome back to Morning Express. Now to continue in our review of newspaper headlines this morning, we are being joined by Mr. Alfonso Zokori, who is a political analyst and a, a public affairs commentator as well. Uh, he will be shedding light into some of the new developments in the country, particularly the increase in four pound price by NNPC Limited, where the federal government says it has no involvement whatsoever in this new development. Well, good morning and welcome to you, uh, Mr. Alfonso. It's wonderful to have you in the studio. Good morning, my brother. It's Nigeria has become one day new story. So we, we are open to it. We enjoy the, the well, drama. Well, what, what can we do other than to talk and uh, probably proffer solutions? Perhaps uh, stakeholders in the system would uh, listen and adhere to some of the solutions being proffered. But the problem of it all is, um, unlike in the Syrian society, yes. where your suggestions make sense, but from all indications, it's like suggestions in Nigeria is just a mere talk because the stakeholder, the implementers, doesn't look at it to me from what I'm seeing. Yes. So we keep talking. Well, well, in, in line with um, talking, let's keep talking. Let's talk about uh, the new fuel pump price hike. Nigerians woke up yesterday to a very a rather shocking but not unexpected development by NNPC and uh, I believe that for most Nigerians what is most aggravating is not the increase in four pound price but the fact that the federal government always comes out to say we have no hand in this we don't know why NNPC did this why isn't the federal government checkmating NNPC limited if government the federal government says they don't have they have no hand in this I think it's obvious trying to share away from their responsibility because NNPC, as much as we know, try to be independent. It also have a greater percentage belong to the federal government, of which the federal government directly or indirectly regulates the NNPC. Yes. So if a trustee of your company is handling your company in a wrong way, what do you do? You got him to question. Swing so, into action. So if federal government try to say um we are not involved it's obviously they're trying to shy away from the truth and they're trying to be like uh, play an ostrich game but average Nigeria understand what is playing out from the first day that Niger that the president make a policy without consultation without um without studying the, the premises. Until today, nothing has been done in that direction. Shows that whatever, in fact, if any Nigeria tells me that he's surprised at the fair price, I will only ask, maybe wake the person up from the uh, dream. In fact, don't forget, last um, two weeks, Dangote made a statement that Nigeria said or he less 40% of what is sold in um, Saudi Arabia. That is great, an indirect word to all Nigerians to know that we are in for it. So what they are playing, just like when Dangote and federal government were fighting. The, the whole NMDPRA, NNPC and Dangote triangular those, fight. Those things are just a system. Yeah. It's battle of who grabs more. Because Dangote too, he's a businessman, trying to maximize his profit. Certainly. He's also looking at the means. Many Nigerians... Um, mistake at that time, thinking that Dangote is fighting for us. Ah, they are not giving me food so that I will... No. All this playing out. In fact, if by the end of this year, Fred did not get to 1.5, praise to God. I mean, it's it's already at 1,000... 45 it's, naira, uh, 1018 naira, though, at, in, in, in some, some parts, part in some of parts of the nation. I mean, particularly in Abuja, it's at 1030 naira. In Lagos, it's at uh, 998 naira, but there are places where it's as high as like 1000 degree, 1017 naira. Exactly, 1018 1, naira. You, you know, so, so the projection for it to hit 1500 naira is one that might as well happen probably before the end of, of November. From my indication, mind you, mind you, this is the the third time in two months 
that they are increasing. NNPC Limited is increasing the four pound price. Then I want the shocking parts. I saw you said that. That and um, okay, one of the newspaper today said full deregulation. Yeah, full deregularization. But the problem is this: Are we truly fully deregulated? If so, an NPC should do praise the price. Which means, if we are, everyone sells according to how he buys. The market forces will not regulate the market. Which means, an NPC can be saying one thousand thirteen naira. Orlando can be saying one thousand fourteen naira. Era no will be saying one thousand two hundred naira. De yes. Depending on where depending they got, on where the, you got the, the, the uh, crude from. The crude from. But for it, for NLPC to still maintain a uniform price that all the free station sells shows that we are still not being told the truth. So if actually we are removing full subsidy, can federal government come out boldly and make it once and for all? Let's know so that we know when, though we claim to be under subsidy, but people are making Nigeria unnecessary. When, when you say if the federal government is removing full subsidy, they should come out and say it. If you remember very vividly on, the, on, on last year during the president's inauguration speech, you know, the first thing he said when he got to the stage was full subsidy is gone. gone. Yes. But at the same uh, time... How, how would you relate full subsidy is gone to full subsidy is not really gone now? What are we looking at? Because these are very two contradicting statements. Because Nigeria is a place that every year have 98% no. Interesting. So, so that is why every Nigeria doesn't believe in what government say, says again. So when government comes and address the nation, in fact, a great percentage of Nigeria don't even listen even to presidential address again because they know that um, about, let me be um, fair to him, about 60% will just be a cooked story. Now, President declared that the first subsidy is gone. Before we know it, NNPCL come to tell us they have subsidized. First was the Minister of Finance coming to uh, have a budget of about $3 trillion for subsidy. That was gone. Again, subs, um, an LPC uh, come to uh, come out again to tell us they are budgeting about five trillion for subsidy. Subsidy that has been <laughs> removed. That so removed. that shows you that a whole lot of things is she that is secrecy. Nigeria are just paying for what they don't know about. Interesting. It is very sad that in a nation we call ours. In fact, let me not be too political here. But I think a um, long time ago, Nigeria lost democracy. Where your voice can be heard. In what way? Where even in, protests. In, in, in what way? And, and where, where did Nigeria, at one point, did we, at what point did we lose our democracy? Where fact, voices need to be heard? In fact, from, let me just come down now okay. to 2015. Okay. From 2015 up till now, Nigeria lost their voice. Even protest. I was laughing this morning when I saw um, Labour threatening to have a go into war with an NPCL. <laughs> I said, Labour, what have you to do with a private company? Because as far as constitution is concerned, an NPC is a registered company. So they can limited do their liability business. company now. Yes. So why don't you go after the federal government? But you know what? A Labour had been couched. George Lowe is, from all indication, is afraid of his life now. So nobody can even protest. The minimum, um, the salary adjustment, minimum wage, the, the seventy thousand naira minimum wage was selective. So Labour did not make any statement or make any move. Because Nigeria is the only place that, if you come out, the institution of the government that you are fighting to protect will fight against you. Now, now, now uh, Mr. Alfonso, many people during or at the advent of the Dangote refinery, uh, especially when 
uh, you know, it came into the picture of the oil and gas industry in the country and there was so much anticipation, positivity, optimism towards what it will do to sort of stem down the harsh effect of the increase in foil pump price. And now Dangote Refinery is fully operational and the cru uh, Naira for crude exchange between uh, NNPC Limited and Dangote Refinery is also, you know, has sort of kicked off. Yet, Nigerians do not see any positive effect with regards to this development. Uh, what of what significance is Dangote Refinery to the oil and gas sector in the country? Last time I was um, discussing in one of the sister stations, and I said, sorry for those Nigerians that believe that the uh, coming of Dangote Refinery to the stream will solve Nigeria problem. Because Dangote is a businessman, and every businessman go for profits. Yes. And he's not only a charity organization. He borrowed money to build a refinery. So automatically, there is no way you will um, think of it. he will come and give everything free. So you want to ma maximize the profit. Then secondly, is that when Nigeria, when we talk about the legalization of... Um, of um, petroleum, we make availability, we make at long the cost that long long will take a longer time. You know why? Why so? Dangote start producing. The members of today, Dangote is operating a monopoly market. No challenge. So, not until we have about three, four, five refineries working in Nigeria or close by, the price the market force would not play any role. But when you say Dangote is operating a monopoly, it, it's not really because he wanted it to be a monopolized system. The NNPC Limited has failed countless times in revi reviving the refineries that we have across the countries. Four refineries that are being serviced and managed with billions of naira, Yet, they are not producing any, any petroleum product. So, so certainly, the issue of monopoly doesn't come up. He just happens to find himself in a system where others have refused to work. Yes. But at the same time, do you know, I, sometimes I find it difficult when all our focus is on an NPCL. Where should our focus be? It be on Nigeria government, the manager of people's resources. Successive governments in Nigeria have failed to do what they need for. Good dog came in, first of all from Obasanjo, he concessioned some of the refineries out. Yadwa revised it. Good luck mapped a certain amount of money for the rehabilitation of those refineries. Nothing happened. Those money taken from the word of our president is gone. In 2015, yeah. um, Bwari came again with another turnaround maintenance and all that. And all that is gone. In 2023, why doing all this? Nigeria government failed. Okay, the question is, if Nigeria government, if Nigeria is a, um, a country, is a private business, will you tell me that all these people will be pu pushing such amount of money for turnaround maintenance of what they know will not be turned around? Now, mind you, uh, uh, Mr. Alphonsus, yes, NNPC is now a private company. It's a limited liability company. But that only happened recently. Yes. NNPC had, for all the years of its existence, been under the federal government. It has been a property of the federal government. And the issue of you know, uh, fuel scarcity, the issue of uh, increase in fuel pump price, the issue of the refineries not working, has been an age-long issue relating to NNPC in line with the federal government. So, why, why, why do you keep hammering on the fact that it is a private company now? Do you know, if I, do you know my reason? Why? So? First of all, let's look at one thing. That NNPC was not... Uh, before now, it's a government agency. Agency, yes. And an NPC uh, group managing director was not voted by Nigeria people. It was an appointment. It is an appointment. It was an appointment. In fact, it, today is still an appointment. Now, what happened? 
if Nigeria, if you employ me and I decide to get an aid and something goes wrong, are you going to hold my aid responsible or hold me that you employed? Well, certainly so, the so person that was employed. Certainly. Now, when we look at it, we look at what the successive governments have done. If NNPC have done anything good in those years, we could have been giving plus to the president, right? Yes. Right now, they're getting it wrong. The same person should take the blame. Because if President Buere, in this case, feels that an NNPC is not doing the right thing, by now, by this morning, Meikari will be gone, according to his word, in his word. So what happens? He brings those that will implement what he wants. Because at the end That's of the President day, Bola, yes, the box top in his table. Then when you look at an NPCL, why I don't want to dwell much on an NPCL is that as of today, it's a private entity. Yes. As it being called. Now, and if you ask them that they are there to make gains, even when I don't know if those gains are coming to Nigeria or not. But so the person we should hold responsible is the person that have that that have the confidence of Nigerians to govern them, to make life easier. There is no part of the world that there is no part of the life that is being subsidized by the government. That is what makes you patriotic. When you remember that as a Nigerian. When you, you are holding the uh, Nigeria passports, that it can get you at least a subsidy of petroleum. It can get you a free water. It can get you a, a, an energy to use. So at, that at what, a fair rate. At a fair rate. That is what will give you confidence and bold and patriotic to say, okay, I can die for this Nigeria. But to, at the time that you know that every, in fact, Somebody was making, there was a program they said that we are against those that is uh, traveling out, that Japa syndrome and all that. They are saying that uh, you are going there to suffer. Some will prefer to die in the prison over there than to be free in Nigeria. That's a rather very bold statement. But that is the fact. Is it? Very fact. Many Nigerians will prefer. In fact, last summer, um, I'm also um, a president of a boy youth council. Okay. There was a video sent by some persons that was held in prison in one of our African countries. We sent an envoy to go to meet them. Funny enough, do not some of them in the prison refuse to come back to Nigeria. Interesting. They refused. So they prefer suffering in the prison than to be in Nigeria. That is a union of life. I'm saying this because there are some some the areas you get to you face some certain things. You know, that's, forget all these rhetoric that you will always come to painting so glorious. It doesn't mean. Today is World, uh, world, world mental, health mental Health Day. Many Nigerians, in fact, each day increase mental illness in average Nigerians. A family of five that earns 70000 as a minimum wage. Tell me how it earns. If not miracle, we make the person survive a week with 70,000. Not talk of in full months. With a retreat tariff now. In fact, Garki here, we have been chained to badge A. Band A, yeah. In one week, 20,000 doesn't starve you. This is the country that's a minimum wage is 17. Eh? So, so, so you're most likely spending more than your minimum wage on electricity tariffs in one month. We are not talking about a bag of rice now. It's almost 100,000. Not to talk of, you know, the, the petrol price. Then we are now saying what uh, mental health day. But, but, so but many, 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 people, many people believe that uh, somehow since the federal government keeps, you know, washing its hands off NNPC Limited as a private company that it is now, you have said it. Uh, the other modalities that they are putting in place, like the CNG uh, conversion uh, sites that they are, you know, creating across the country, they have now created a portal, an online portal where you can register, have your car converted, and you pay in what in the Niger Nigerian uh, uh, parlance, you pay small, small. You know, uh, is this a viable solution to the current issue at hand? My problem in Nigeria is. Um, we announce policies without understanding. Every policy is rooted in a theory, and every theory has challenges. 
That is why there is, in every church, there is critics. So, when you come out, last time that was there, federal government came out and said how many universities is going to enjoy so so number of um, percent of um, subsidy, yes. electricity, electricity tariff uh, in for subsidies. Subsidies. Yeah. What happened to it today? Now, the conversion CNG, CNG could have been one of the answer, but average Nigerians, I'm not saying poor Nigerians, I say average Nigerians cannot afford the conversion. For you to convert your car, you'll be budgeting 1.52 million. How many Nigerians can afford it now? That's a big question. So, because, and this, this issue of Porter, we all know this. Politics are there. Go and check those that we get access to that portal, that we get that through that portal. And you know, another issue that Nigerians always face, especially when the government opens up a portal for uh, some sort of uh, registration or anything, if, if the portal is overcrowded, which it certainly will be because everybody wants to convert to CNG to get you know, their cars moving at cheaper rates, what if the site crashes? As, as it always does with other sites that the government creates. Yes, because God, that is what I said the first, my first statement. We announced policies without carrying out a due diligence on how it will work. Nigeria is above 200 million. And possibly you are creating a portal that have maybe maximum of uh, f uh, 15 million. Go and ask an NPCL. They just did advert for employment within one week of the five million applied. And maybe federal government in doing this kind of policy might create a portal that will not take up to 15 million. And just as you said, most of all this policy is the first group of persons that it will favor. We know that. And after that, that's the end. Because this policy by next year. You will be, it will be among one of those policies that they started. Because there's no maintenance. That, that never, that never that took never, flight. Uh, so we know all this. So when government come out with so many policies, so many persons look at it, either if they're not among the first group, they will just hands off because they know that it's going to end up in stories. On the issue of NLC, uh, we had touched on it a little bit earlier. You said that um, in your words, Comrade Joe Ajero has been crippled. He has been, his wings have been clipped. You know, he can't do anything anymore. Is, is the NLC still as strong as the NLC that, you know, Nigerians used to pride themselves in, that they know when the NLC speaks, the federal government listens? That is a question that um, I think it also boils down to what I said before about when Nigeria lost democracy. In 2012, NLC was strong. Before that, in 20, 2007, 2006, Oshamore said the NLC was everywhere. And that is why today, if Oshamore is making some statement, I did this, I did that, and that. I said, it's because at that time, we still have some element of democracy that allowed to fly. In 2012, the same thing happened. But in 2015, what happened? From 2015, we begin to see crack down on NLC. And as they begin to lose their voice, not because they cannot speak, but you are not afraid of if you do, what will be the consequence? In 22, from 2023, we see the worst of it all. We are near C, we propose a, a, a strike. And in the midst of that, the organizer will be picked and nothing happened. And to worsen it again, this last arrest and all that with George. Uh, George, yes. If in fact, even his family will even call him and let him know, guy, if you die, your name will even be just be on newspaper one day, that's all. Because it is obvious that Nigeria is not ready to um, practice democracy we claimed. Because look at it. Um George, before now, I did make statements. You will see action. But since all this is happening, do you still see that vibe again? Because those things, the wings has been crippled as far as I'm concerned. And we hope that more other agencies will not be because that will be the end of democracy. When men, when people will no longer have the confidence to speak their mind. 
Well, uh, Mr. Alfonso, uh, it couldn't have been put any better way than you did. Uh, we need to allow democracy return to the country and return fully and have the full effect that it has always had uh, on Nigerians. And it is also pertinent to ensure that as policies and uh, are being rolled out, let these policies be in line with bettering the lives of Nigerians and ensuring that uh, the uh, hardships are less are lessened day by day. Now, to continue in this, still talking about uh, the hardship that Nigerians are being faced with, the economic hardship, food crisis, and now, of course, uh, the constant increase in fuel pump price hike. Transporters across the country have hiked up their fares. This is a much anticipated um, action uh, since the announcement by NNPC Limited of a new fuel pump price. Now, let's talk about the Nigerian people themselves. We've been talking about the elites, NNPC Limited, the ruling class, NLC. Let's talk about the ordinary Nigerian that earns a minimum wage, that goes to work, has a family to feed, but struggles every day to get by. And now there is a hike in, 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 in transport fares. Even going to work is now an issue. How do we get out of this? When we, as to average Nigerians today, it is, we, you know, there is one thing that is already known. We have already believed that Nigerians, if we push out to the wall, we break the wall and jump out. And that is what average Nigerians is doing now. In many offices now, workers go to work twice in a week. Yes. And that also shows inefficiency of the government. Because if actually in office, yes. five persons is required to do certain job, and because of this hardship, it's only two persons that is there, which means there are aspects of work that will be undone. And that will further affect our um, productivity as exactly. a nation. Yes. As a nation. So if federal government look at all this and do not do anything, that shows insensitivity to the people because every day millions of Nigerians are driven to poverty. Just imagine your salary was seventy thousand, you are buying fuel at nine seventy, now it's a one thousand thirteen naira, yes. sixteen naira increase, about twelve percent uh -huh. increase. Yes. And you are now looking at it, you are now looking at do your, increase in, do your income increase? No. In fact, it's the, beyond the fuel, you are not paying transport. Okay, to this morning, from Gariki to here, that used to be 1,000, at least last week, 1,015. It's not 2,000, 2,000. So that's, now, that's more than 100% surge. That is, now, sometimes if you are in a vehicle and you want to talk and the person begins, some of the driver begin to be very aggressive, and you will not blame them. By the time they, some of them buy from what we call black markets. Which is higher than the which regular... Which is now uh, almost 2,000 per uh, liter. And if you say you are not going to buy that, you queue up for the whole day in the free station. At the end of the day, you come back home, you have your family to take care of, we have the school fees. And you must have on. not made any money you, that day. You may have not made any money. And you are coming down. Somebody is coming to... In fact, you see people fighting for as low as 20 naira change. That shows you the level Nigerians have been taken to. Ordinary, before that is a popular word we used to joke with, keep the change. <laughs> Do you know that? that now was? nobody... <laughs> no, no, nobody... Nobody, nobody keeps the change. change. <laughs> <laughs> so you see people fighting over 20 naira. 15 air. Uh, can you tell me here? Uh, here is 150. Here is 200. You see a, an able bodied man exchanging bro for 15. But, 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 but Alphonse, it is indeed very sad as um, uh, comical as you know, Nigerians might want to take the situation. And you know, Nigerians love to laugh, they just laugh off things in the midst of hardship, in the midst of uh, daunting realities of life being faced especially by the economic uh, deterioration in the country we love to laugh but on a more serious note the society is degenerating economically are we going to see more springing up of uh, protests 
revolts, revolutions across the country. Because at this point, it appears that uh, Nigerians' uh, patience is waning out. First of all, there are what the political class, um, I, I think it's um, Adam Smith, that says the workers, they describe workers as dogs in a chain. So I want to use that to describe Nigeria people. That all of us were in a chain or in a cage. Everyone struggling to come out on his own. But unfortunately, none of us will come out until we, all of us decide to come out. Because even if you make that wealth and your, all your neighbors are poor, you will not enjoy that wealth in peace. So when you look at it, thank God that God gives Nigerians that grace of always turning everything into laughter. If not, you'll be picking dead bodies on the streets. If what is happening in Nigeria today is to happen in America, in any of the Western world, you will see number of um, suicide. The, 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 the crime rates, the crime rates the crime will, rate will, rate will be uh, extreme. Yeah. Do you know why? Because in all this, when we look at it, we find out that no matter how you do, despite what you do, Nigeria will find a way. At least one person will tell, ah, now your own worst pass. And everybody laughs. Now, when you talk about protests, my brother, who is protesting again? End by government protesters is still languishing in prison. The truth is that Nigeria, the Nigeria elite have couched all of us. But you can't even come out that you are protesting. In fact, Nigeria states have criminalized protests. Un un unconstitutionally. Unconstitutionally. Of that immediately you come out for protest, they will tag everything and get you arrested. And you know what? Nobody. And just judiciary, they used to say it's the last hope of the common man. I don't think there's any common man again. I mean, gone are the days when we used to see the NLC storming the streets in protest or even, uh, you know, shutting down the country in protest of uh, situations like this. But now it appears that uh, all the NLC does is to demand, demand, demand reversals, demand this and that, yet no action is taken. Yes, because even today, if NLC should call for protest, few persons will come out. Everybody is tired. Everybody is tired. Everybody is afraid. Because if you die, the country continues. The continu country continues. If they apprehend you, you are a lot in jail. So it is as if, in fact, the judiciary will even aid the government to make sure that your rights it totally worked out. I, I, I so, mean, with, with, with the coming of the new uh, CJ and uh, Kudirat uh, Kekere Kun, she has made quite some strong yet comforting statements uh, recently with regards to the judiciary, citing that the judiciary will ensure that they protect the rights of the common man and not just, uh, you know, the elite, because there's this perception in the country that uh, if you go to court with somebody who is wealthy, you are most likely, 100% likely, to lose that case. We wait do, to see Do that. you see the CJN restoring the hope, the trust, and the belief of Nigerians in the judiciary? Um, after this uh, speech of the CJN, some of us were waiting, well, not with high hope, to see, because... Niger in Nigeria, I would say talk is cheap. We are waiting. But the event in uh, Liver State have shown us that. Okay. <laughs> or else, otherwise, if not, it's a case, it's uh, just like story like before. Well, well talk talking about the events in River State, that's um, most likely our next line of action. But uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's just turn our attention to the Nigerian Senate, where um, Senate President Gotsu Lekpabio has asked the state governors across the country to ensure that they comply with the Supreme Court's ruling on local government autonomy. Now, as uh, Mr. Alfonso has rightly put here, the situation in River State, as well as other uh, states of the Federation where local government uh, council polls held, doesn't really reflect uh, the decision of the Supreme Court with regards to the LG autonomy granted 
to local government areas by the federal government. Now, talking about that, firstly, let's hammer a beat on River State before we head to the Senate and uh, discuss that. What would you make of the development in River State, especially the aftermath of the LG polls that uh, was met with a lot of arson and killings? The um, event in um, River State is a pure demonstration of state capture. When we see a governor fighting locally, and Minister of FCT fighting with Nigeria states from the center. So, you know, there's always room for many persons to give many rooms, reasons, and all that. But it is, the problem I have here is that the liver people are suffering because the two gladiators have nothing to lose as far as I'm concerned. But the liver people, are suffering. Governance is affected. The taxpayers' money was used to build those local government uh, sectorates. And now more taxpayers' monies will be used more to rehabilitate. More taxpayers' money will be used. The um, building of democracy that's supposed to be given to the people with that money will not be there. And at the end, everybody claimed that he's fighting for the liver people. Both, my home, appeal, both home and abroad. My appeal, especially to the Minister of FCT, is please concentrate in FCT. Concentrate in FCT. It has been just like a normal now in Nigeria that Godfatherism doesn't last long. When you fight and install a successor in office, Though this starts so early, but after some time, you lose the uh, uh, the power or the um, how will I put it? The way you, power. You you put you lose the way power to control him, because he also want to be a boss of himself. Yes. I I can I salute somebody like the governor of Ebony State. Many of these states are having similar issues with their successors. But most, more, many of them manage it well. Without necessarily, necessarily Without washing their, their dirty, dirty linings in public. public. And allowing whoever comes in, knowing that the same thing happened when you take over. Allow the, the now governor. President said something to him the last time that they have a peace talk, which I thought is a fatherly advice. He said to him, Go and do your work and wait for the election. Huh. I think now, was, now, now he, this statement was to uh, Sir Simi Fubara. No, it was talking to Winke. Okay, so I think that was like telling him, I had similar thing when Abode was there. He said, I'm coming to fight. I wait during the election. Now, you know, the conflicting thing or sort of confusing thing here is on one hand. God for Darism is very good in ensuring that there is a succession of policies in governance, policies that are beneficial to people in the state. On the flip side, God for Darism is bad because it sometimes clips the wings of the person in power who doesn't necessarily act as the position uh, you know that they are in, but according to the decisions of somebody who has left office, and is somewhere dictating the affairs of the state. How do we balance this? Not entirely eroding the state of Godfatherism, but ensuring that Godfatherism doesn't clip the wings of any government. Godfatherism has its roots in what we call mentorship. I'm sure possibly growing up you have a, uh, someone you're aspiring to be like. I mean, I still have a mentor now. Okay. Your mentor do not translate your mentor do not moderate your life. Godfatherism should be like a mentor. Okay, I bring you in. I see that you have potential to do it. Come and do it. Let me guide you. But it's not that I should moderate your life. I should moderate what you do. Because at the end of it all, nobody will call his name. It's your name they will call. So please... Nigeria, I have this experience. 
um, I was the national president of my community, Sokoma. And during the election, many approached me, who is your candidate? I said, I don't have the candidates. I have no candidate. Choose who you want. I will guide the person, whoever it is. When the new, um, the new government then came on board, and for some certain time, the, the new president began to act somehow, I stay back. Because I know, I'm not expecting anything from you. I did not put you there. I did not want to be your godfather controlling you. But nature knows how it teaches lessons. And by the time you do one or two and realize that there are things you cannot do, those who have been there have more experience than you. In the local palace, my people will say, any woman, where first you come, marry, come, uh, person house. First you get um, all these old uh, items. Yes. He was the one that called and began to beg. As of today, I don't think he take many decisions without consulting me. And I'll freely give him my advice and stay away. I have my respect. Nigeria governor should emulate that. They should know that you cannot install someone and control him forever. Learn to live when ovulation is high. So that is what I, want, I expect from uh, Governor Wiki. Yes, he may look at his political values. In fact, but now he will lose it more because with the successful uh, election of the um, council chairman and councillors on, under APP, under APP, which we know is it's just a false uh, political party. So, so we know that whether he likes it or not, and this we have about two years and to the next election, it will be a time for the governor to use them to start working on grassroots. Well, well, well uh, that's uh, quite a point there. Let's move away from uh, River State now and back to the Senate. You know, the, the Senate uh, was in a rowdy session yesterday on the issue of local government autonomy and the enforceability of, you know, allowing local government areas or local government councils to operate independent of state governments, the way state governments operate independent of the federal government. Uh, in a situation like this, why do you think that some state governors do not want to let go of local government councils to have that full autonomy that the Supreme Court in the country, the apex court in the nation, has granted them? Yes, uh, because that is like um, where some of the resources, you know, that is the only area that you don't so much account for. Every other time you can be called to account for this or that, but the state, in fact, m many states in Nigeria, what they do with local governments, and that is why I'm not too excited, excited as of today about the local government autonomy with the kind of election that is being conducted in local governments, where the governors practically appoint his voice into those offices. Do you know what they do even now? You know what they do? No, no, not at all. And that is what we continue. And that alone will root this issue of state uh, autonomy. So you... What you, they you, do is you, those you, guys, yeah. they will put you there. You sign this an agreement. Those money we paid into local government accounts. This is next phase. It will be paid into the local government accounts. You withdraw it cash. And remit it back. And remit it back. That's what has been now. Done. Now, is this a fact or just an insinuation by you? <laughs> this is a fact. This is a and, fact. And you can go and check some local governments. I don't want to mention states here. Well, well, no, no need to mention because states. But are you sure is, what you are saying? This is um, a, live, a live broadcast. And I will, I will challenge the searchers to go into the search and see what will happen. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Mr. Alfonso, I'm afraid this is uh, all time will permit us to take on the program or on this segment of Morning Express, but it's been a very um, elaborative discussion with you on the issues of, uh, you know, oil and the crisis in the oil and gas industry in the country. Uh, and of course, uh, the local government autonomy situation uh, between the Senate and state governors in the country. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And please, lastly, let me beg the federal government. Yes, to just in just a few seconds. Please, for the sake of the oath of office you have taken, know that Nigerians are suffering. And do all you can to eliminate, to reduce this suffering. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Alphonsus. Well, 